welcome back YouTube to Peterson Auto. Today we're going to talk about something that uh, is quite commonly asked question. However, uh, most people don't know a actual good answer for it. And that's sizing or picking a carburetor for your, usually your classic car uh, or your race car. But you know, once in a while you got that old pickup truck out back and man, that carburetor is just a pain in the rear. So you go ahead and you decide it's time to upgrade. So a little bit of what we're going to look at here are 351 Windsor and 302, both Ford engines. You can do this with just about anything else. Um, you know, there's some math you can do to do the conversions. The easiest way to do it is a converter online. The 351 Windsor is 0.203125 cubic foot for the displacement and 5.8 liters, okay? The 302 is going to be 0.174769 cubic foot or 5 liters. So you have the cubic inch displacement, the cubic foot, and the liters. Usually you can find the cubic inches and the liters just by simple Google search or maybe cubic centimeters on some of your newer cars. However, uh, the cubic foot is what you're looking for here. The cubic foot number right there is what you actually need to find out how big of a carb you need on your car. So what you're going to wind up doing is you're going to take that cubic foot number, that's how many cubic feet of air it's ingesting per revolution times your RPMs. So for example, 351 Windsor times the, the two... 03125 times 6,000 RPM, 6,000 right here, is going to give you 609 CFM. Times the 8,000 is going to give you 812, 10,000, 1,015. Now we're not done yet. There's more you have to consider. 302, again, 524, 700, and 873. You need to take volumetric efficiency into the equation. Volumetric efficiency is how much air your engine is going to use compared to the actual volume inside the cylinders. So now you got to make some considerations. This is where it kind of gets a little bit tough, but there's some guidelines you can go by. Uh, your old beater pickup truck, stock engine probably 85% volumetric efficiency. That's what you're gonna see in something like that, a stock carbureted engine. We'll say 85% uh, for your stock pickup, okay? Uh, for your street strip classic car, we're gonna go with a 95, 90 to 95%. So 85%, 90-95% volumetric efficiency, what they're meaning, what they're telling you today is that your engine's not perfectly efficient. Um, you know, you have heads that are going to be restrictive. You have a smaller than factory carburetor where sizing the right carburetor comes in. How back in the 70s, they would detune your car and make less horsepower. So that's one thing to remember. Um, a couple other things will factor into this. We don't need to get that precise with this. You're not going to get a, um, you know, a 526 CFM carb. So, you know, you're rounding it anyway. Uh, you just want to get your rough volumetric efficiency. Take a good guess. The other thing is your race engines. Okay. Dedicated race car engines are usually 95 plus percent. Um, some will go into say 105 percent or 115 and what you get there is you get an engine that's actually flowing so efficiently it's able to take in more air than it would actually need to fill the cylinders um two things to consider here one is altitude as you go up and down below sea level you're gonna have some slight changes uh, the density of air is going to change. Air is roughly 
14.7 PSI at sea level. Um, the density of, I don't know the exact numbers offhand, the density of a cubic foot of air uh, at sea level compared to a mile high is going to be roughly like a 3% difference. So if you're doing a race engine, find out the density of the air at your altitude and figure out the ratio. So 14.7 PSI of air pressure at uh, sea level, let's say at your altitude, you get 14.5. Okay, 14.5 PSI. Find your percent difference between these two and then take that times whatever number you have up in here. And that's gonna give you a compensation for your altitude. Again, such a minute difference, unless you're doing a dedicated race engine, you don't have to worry about it. So now we're gonna go back to uh, the good old beater Chevy pickup there with a 350 small block and two bolt mains with a four barrel carburetor. And we're gonna say, you know, that would be 85% efficiency. Now we're gonna go to your 351 Windsor Mustang, nice driver car. You want it to drive well, but you put on a intake, some heads, maybe a mild street cam, 90 to 95%. Now we're gonna go one step further. We're gonna say full blown race engine. Um, running 110 octane type of setup, 95 to 105%. And in the racing world, you may see A hundred and fifty percent volumetric efficiency. That's going to be in your boosted applications, your turbos and superchargers. Um, so one hundred fifty percent volumetric efficiency is usually going to come in at fourteen point seven psi of boost. We'll discuss boosting things if this video hits off. We'll discuss boost, how much power you're going to get per amount of boost added, and a bunch of other stuff in another video. Um, however. You do have different volumetric efficiencies. There's ways to calculate this. 99% of you can use anything in here and round to the nearest carb you can find. And you'll be completely adequate. Now, so we'll say you're 609 CFN for 6,000 RPM Windsor. That's that 351 Windsor in your pickup truck at an 85% volumetric efficiency, okay? So what you're gonna do You're gonna do a little math, so bear with me here. You're gonna take your 609 times 0.85. Now, I haven't done this beforehand, so you'll have to bear with me as I actually do the math. Sorry, YouTube, made a mistake. Okay, there you go, YouTube. So it's uh, you know, 6,000 RPM, 351 Windsor pulls out 609 CFM at the 6,000 RPM red line. 
So what do we have here? We have 85% uh, volumetric efficiency in that ragged old pickup truck. It could be less than this. You have a stuck valve, that engine just runs like crap, bad compression, stuff happens, could be less than that. But 517, 65 CFM at that 85% volumetric efficiency. So what does that mean now when we're sizing a car? We now know the number we're looking for, 517 CFM. So let's go get an 850 double pumper. It's going to give us more power. No, it's not. You're going to be burning fuel and then throwing it out the tailpipe afterwards because you're not going to have enough to actually burn in there. So for this particular car, well, truck in this case, um, you know, being a truck, I'd probably go with something like a uh, Street Avenger from Holly. They're a great uh, carburetor. They also make a uh, pickup truck series of carburetor for a lot better lower end torque. 570 CFM would be a good one. Uh, you could also put a 500 on it. So 500 CFM, you're sitting there going, wait, that, that, that's too small. That's smaller than the number you gave me. Well, yeah. Are you running your old ragged pickup truck up to 6,000 RPMs? Are you redlining it on the highway? I don't think so. Smaller carburetors will usually build lower end torque. Um, but the trade-off you get is loss of high-end horsepower. So there's how you size a carburetor for your particular engine. In this case, the 351 Windsor. You can follow through with any of these other numbers. Uh, quick wrap up, you take the cubic inch and the liter displacement, one or the other, put them in a converter and get the cubic feet. If you're at altitude, figure out if there's a change. Again, under a mile high, under Denver, you should be fine. Then you go ahead, you find your volumetric efficiency, pickup truck, an already pickup truck, mild street car, race car, and turbo. And then you go ahead and figure out what you need as far as the CFM goes. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.